Good morning, everyone. Um, so Infusion is very happy to sponsor this year again the Middle Conference. So I'd like to thank the organizers for the opportunity for us to present our work. Um, so some of you might have already talked to us uh, at the booth or at another conference, but for the others, we're Infusion. So we are an independent R&D company, and our mission is to solve problems related to medical imaging that are most of the time pretty complex. So we're a company founded in Munich, Germany, 2012, and right now we have approximately 50 full-time employees. And just to give you a bit of a concrete idea of the kind of things we're working on, uh, I'll just show you two examples. So for instance, um, we're here looking at an, a suite of algorithms that uh, are able to process CT images of the spine. So you just take one CT image and uh, automatically you have a bunch of uh, machine learning models running in the background that detects all the vertebrae, some of the key points, and are able to segment them in a couple of seconds. And these kind of things are used for surgery planning or surgery navigation and are currently integrated in a number of clinical products and are actually used um, during surgeries. I mentioned some more complex problems, and this is one of them. So now we have much more than one image. Um, we have here an MR image of the knee. Um, we've segmented it preoperatively, and this is what you see in the bottom right. This is um, the mesh, uh, the resulting mesh. And during the procedure, we acquire an ultrasound uh, sweep. So it's a stream, a video stream of 2D images with tracking position. So it's displayed in 3D, and in real time we segment um, the bone in that case. Uh, this is the red line you see, and we can form, we can construct a 3D point cloud and register it to the pre-op image. And everything happens during the acquisition in real time in the background. So it puts together a lot of um, technologies together. And um, so perhaps the main message is um, I want to convey is that our company, I think, is a pretty unique in the sense that it's a mix. It's hard to define. It's a mix of R&D consulting we do, uh, but we also, um, to some extent, a software provider and a research lab. And I think this is really important to mix the three things. So it's not like separate divisions, but and like our daily work is to combine those three aspects and because it makes everything um, it's a more ready for clinical use, which is um, one of the questions that was asked before. And so I want to quickly mention those three aspects. Um, so in terms of R&D consulting, this is what we do basically to earn our money. Um, so people come to us with a specific set of problems that are usually um, innovative, sometimes with crazy ideas. So we have to start with feasibility studies, but we also conduct uh, the research and development parts, the, the implementation and integration, all the way to the product certification. And what's in important here is that basically it means that the same team is um, able to take one project really from the beginning and the inception all the way to the actual use um, in clinical practice. What that also means is that it's the very same code that is done for research purposes and for the final product. And uh, this means that we have to put a lot of emphasis on our code. Um, being able to do something like this, like to do research on a project like this, but also making it happen on a real system is incredibly difficult. But if you're really, but basically what we uh, decided very early on is that we invest a lot of efforts and resources in the modularity of our framework because then you can use it for research and it's product grade code that, you, that our customers can directly integrate and try in practice. Uh, what that means in practice is that we have a set of um, libraries, common libraries that the whole company is using so everyone's working on the same code base mostly in C++ for performance and um, for performance reasons but uh, we also have bindings to Python uh, for the more uh, prototyping aspect of the work and C-sharp for uh, the user interface, for instance. And um, so what I've just shown you is our software, which is called the Infusion Switch, which we use to do the uh, prototyping and the R&D work. But it's the very same code uh, behind the scenes that goes into our um, customer applic final application. 
And also we, do, um, we developed a number of tools to make our R&D even more efficient and um, agile. And this software infusion labels is one of those tools. Um, because early on, we noticed as data scientists or let's say machine learning uh, practitioners that data is the core um, part of our work. And um, so it's very important to be able to understand how, how your data looks and uh, whether there's any problems. So instead of having um, you know, your data stored in a file, in a folder somewhere on your um, computer, we have the software that allows you to import all your images together with any kinds of annotations and visualize them very nicely in 3D so you can just look at the whole database, you can mark some images and um, yeah, in that way you can easily spot um, problems or understand a bit more your data which gives you more intuition in um, the models you'll, you'll be training. Um, this software is not just about um, visualization, it's also about annotation. So we have a number of tools embedded in that that allow the user um, to actually annotate those images in also a very um, quick and efficient way. So those tools that you see here are mostly computer vision driven, so they're very generic. They can apply to any modality or any images, whether it's 2D, 3D or 4D. And we have a number of uh, tools that are more or less automated. Uh, here you can see also some interactive segmentation where we just have to uh, brush um, a couple of strokes in the different bones, for instance, of the city image. And then we indicate here that the rest is background. And there is an algorithm running in the background. It and automatically propagates uh, your annotation to the full volume. Of course, we're also able to handle video sequences and propagate annotations um, in the temporal sequence. So all this makes our work also a little bit easier. And uh, this, is, this started as an internal tool, but we're also um, giving it out to our partners. Another thing that was very important and is pretty new is that I mentioned Python, which is very important to be able to uh, try out new ideas. And uh, our whole framework is now also available from Python. And that means two different things. So on the one side, uh, we're able to import all our algorithms from a Python interpreter or a Jupyter Notebook. So you can, um, if you want to use our registration algorithm, you can do it and call it in a couple of Python lines of code. But you can also um, extend our software. So the software that I've shown you, you just have to uh, import a Python script where you've defined a specific class. And uh, you can basically, your algorithm can actually show up in our um, software. So you can benefit from all our existing functionalities and visualization capabilities. And yeah, just integrate your algorithm in a more user friendly way, maybe. So all this allows us to do um, research. And uh, we don't, we can't publish everything that we do. Um, but we, when we think we have a interesting and general idea we do. So I just want to mention um, as a final thing um, three ideas and one of them is about segmentation. So here we're just imagine you want to train simple units for segmenting the heart structure in an MR scan like this. Uh, you want to work with at a resolution of one millimeter, which is good, but sometimes you have large volumes, you need a big GPU. And what we notice with our customers is that sometimes they want to integrate or run this model, either uh, they want to try it out on their laptop, which doesn't have a good GPU, or within a test pipeline, so they don't want to spend a lot of time running those models. So what you can do is train another model that um, has been um, you know, processing images with a lower resolution, so for instance, three by three millimeter. But the problem is that you have to train different models and maintain them, and this is a bit cumbersome. So what um, what the idea of um, this paper is, is that we want to be able to have, with a single network, be able to configure the, um, the spacing it works at. So that it means basically you can tune, based on your compute capabilities, uh, the precision with, um, of, the, of the model with one single parameter. And the idea is very simple, actually. So it's based on the units, uh, and the architecture is fixed. But what we do is that instead of training the unit, we're training another network, so a hyper network, that is going to predict 
the weights of um, the unit. And this hypernetwork is being conditioned by the spacing. So uh, if you look at here, the input is going to be the, the target spacing, and it's going to go through a MLP, a very simple MLP that's going to configure the units. And the units, then you give it the image, and you're going to get the segmentation. And with this approach, you can uh, basically control the accuracy of your segmentation and your compute requirements. A second idea that we introduced uh, last year um, was about registration this time. So we often have the problem of multimodal registration, where uh, when it, you, for instance, when you have here an MR scan and an ultrasound scan, usually registration is performed by optimizing, um, by solving a global optimization problem with a similarity measure. It can be mutual information, but uh, there are more advanced or elaborate ones like MIND or LC2. And the idea here is that instead of training uh, a machine learning model that would predict and give you the results, what we do is slightly different. Um, we're training a model to compute this, those similarity measure in a much more efficient way. So those, instead of spending time to compare two patches in a very elaborate way, um, so here, instead of having LC2, which is a similarity measure between different image patches, we're trained a neural network that's going to produce feature maps so that uh, the dot product of those features um, will be an approximation of this complex value. And that means that um, it's going to be much faster to evaluate. And also, as, a, as an added bonus, it's going to be differentiable. What that means concretely is that you can use then much, uh, much more efficient optimizers, and uh, you have a really um, high speed up. And what that turns into being able to optimize the problem in a much more global and exhaustive way, and you're much more robust to the initialization. So for, with this method, we're, we had a 400 times speed up in computational time, and we can, that means we can do global multimodal registration of 3D volumes in a few seconds, and that generalizes to any modality or uh, anatomy, actually. The last... Um, paper I quickly want to mention was about this uh, spine application I've uh, shown at the beginning. Um, the way it worked um, implicitly was that uh, we take the CT scan, we put it through a unit, and that generates a, a heat map for the, the, the different vertebrae and the key points. Uh, but when you have this heat map here, um, in order to identify the, the different vertebrae, you need to cluster them together, like which key points go together and um, which vertebrae is which, like this uh, triplet corresponds to the vertebra T1 or C7, for instance. And this is not always easy. You cannot just count the number of them because sometimes you have misdetections or you have problems in the vertebra. And um, so the idea of this paper was to use a graph neural network to make this estimation more robust uh, so that we can really cluster uh, triplets of key points that belong together and we can correctly identify them. Um, so yeah, that's, that was just a small subset of the things we do at Infusion. Uh, I representing, I'm representing the machine learning team, but we have many other teams that work on very exciting projects, computer vision, ultrasound, x-ray, even robotics or um, anatomy modeling. So if you're interested in um, joining us, if, you wanna, if you're looking for an internship or a position, you can come to us at our booth, or you can check our website. And if you want to try out our framework um, or our software, you can just go to this page, and you can get free licenses. With that, um, thank you. Thank you.